guys, this is Grizzly with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at another Pilot Pen. I've already reviewed a couple of Pilot Pens such as the Custom 74, the Custom Heritage 92, the Capless slash Vanishing Point. And today we add another review of a very interesting Pilot Pen, the Pilot Falcon to the lineup. Pilot is one of the three big Japanese pen manufacturers beside Platinum and Sailor. And Pilot has probably the most wide range of pen models. Platinum's pen model range is pretty limited. They don't have that many models, maybe a handful. The most well-known being the Preppy and the 3776 probably. Also Sailor, the most well-known ones are the Pro Gear and the 1911 that each come in different sizes. But they have a couple of other models, but that's basically it. Then Pilot has probably the widest palette of pens to review and to choose from. And the one we are going to have a look at today is the Pilot Falcon as said. The Pilot Falcon does basically come in two different models. There's a resin version and a metal version. It's actually a lacquered brass. It's a brass body that is lacquered. Um, that brass metal version is slightly more expensive. It's the one that I'm having a look at here today. Uh, street price a little bit higher than 200 euro or 240 dollars, something like that. Let's have a look at the packaging first. The Falcon comes in a rather large box. It's a the box is a little larger than the box that the Capless does come in, for instance. It's a pretty cool, fancy looking box. I really like the design of that is matte black, the slightly glossy logo on here and those silver dots. Just looks really cool, looks really high quality. Some silky padding in here. The pen then rests in here, which also looks really cool. Whoops, slides out that slick glossy finish here the falcon always comes with a soft nib that's what the s stands for i do here have the sf which is the soft fine there's a soft extra fine soft medium and soft broad as well i'll get to that in a minute because you can flex the pilot falcon a little and of course the finer your nib is the more line variation you get with a flex right if you have an extra fine or a fine point normally and you then flex that then the line variation between the fine and uh, the flexing will be a lot larger than if you have a medium or broad nib on it the sm or the sb nib and you then flex you will not see that much line variation then you just pull out this padding here oops, out of this huge box and you'll get a user and care guide nothing special we don't have to have a look into that and a warranty card put all that aside uh, and I also got a small brochure with the pen uh, we may have a look at that in the beginning because there is often speculation about this quite special shaped falcon nib here what it is reminiscent of and as we can read here in official pilot marketing materials this 14 karat gold rhodium plated nib combines the sharp lines of a falcon speak with a softness of a calligraphers brush so the nib shell definitely be reminiscent of a falcon speak which i do think is not very hard to see and uh, then of course it's a uh, it's a great everyday writer, but due to the ability of... i show you a couple of things that you can do with the nib, which are pretty cool, actually. It's also a great pen for, for creative people, for flex writing, and just, or just for, for sketching and stuff like that. Um, yeah, as said, the Falcon's body is brass with a black lacquer coating trimmed with polished rhodium and metal rings. And we've already talked about the plated 14 karat gold nib and these the line widths that the pen is available with that I've already talked about. But now let's have a look at that pen. Pretty modern looking design if you ask me. A very very modern clip and then essentially a flat top pen that is a cigar shaped pen that is capped off on both sides. 
The pen is available in a number of different colors. I don't know by heart what colors it all is. I, as a matter of fact, do have the black version here as said, the brass metal version, a very glossy cap top here with a small ridge in a very modern shaped clip that looks like this, which is spring loaded, very nice flares out down here makes it super easy to clip into a shirt pocket or into a pen pouch that's really wonderful we have this highly glossy black finish here that does pick up fingerprints not like crazy but it's definitely picking up fingerprints um just for you to be aware of that we then have pilot japan here on the back side of the cap we have a silver metal ring here that flares down a little bit onto the barrel the barrel then also uh, no, not flares down tapers down the barrel then also tapers down a little more towards a end looks like a knob but it's actually not a knob it's just like a metal end thing finish tapers down even more and then just capped off here as well right so a very classic very modern pen design which i personally find really appealing i do like black and silver pens anyway and that pen design is something that can be used in my opinion in any setting it doesn't matter if it's a business meeting in school university whatever that's a pretty pretty you know unpretentious pen i kind of like that i really like that design uh, we can then screw off the top that is one and a half turns i think one yeah, a little less than one and a half turns, something that I really, really appreciate. Makes it a fast note taker as well if you don't have to twist the cap three times until it finally comes off. Small plastic inner cap in here, which prevents the nib from drying out. Does an excellent job in doing so. I never had a problem picking this pen up and it wouldn't write. We then have a fairly long section with quite many threads here actually but i said just one and a quarter turns until the cap comes off those threads are not sharp you can definitely however the section itself is plenty long enough find your position to grab the pen which for flex writing that i'm going to show you in a minute now this is not a full flex pen i wouldn't even call it a semi flex pen some people see those videos on youtube with those special spencer script modifications of that pen uh, if you don't have that pen especially modified, if you just buy it factory like the one here, do expect the little line variation, the line variation that I'm going to show you in a writing sample in a minute, but don't expect even a semi-flex pen or something like that. I don't think that that really is a flex writer. It's You can use it for some creative purposes, but it's basically a regular fountain pen with a slightly softer nib. So don't mistake that unique nib design for this being a flex pen such as for example um, the falcon nib that is available from pilot that has those small cutouts on the side and that you often see on the um on the, on the custom 1912 that nib does allow for considerably more flex than this nib here however as said i'm going to show you that it's a soft nib and it will allow for some line variation but don't overdo it you might you may well just damage the nib otherwise we have a long section back to the section which then allows you as said to find your grip it's a long pen as you'll see in the size comparison in a minute plenty long enough you can post the cap and it does also post fairly deep onto the barrel but i don't think that it's necessary to post the cap it does add some extra heft here makes the pen slightly slightly back heavy not a lot because like the weight of the pen in my slightly larger hands rests here if you have smaller hands and you hold the pen something like this i do believe it will get more back heavy because the cap is brass and the section here actually is plastic so the section is not metal which is comfortable because it does not make the section slippery at all but um so there is not the weight is not really down here the weight is rather here at the barrel side because that is brass and that acid is plastic three metal rings here and then as said this fantastic very smooth with a slight amount of feedback falcon nib that is shaped like a falcon's beak you can see that here it's a very very beautiful nib i really like that that's definitely star of the show here nib slit 
Breather Hole 14K585, Pilot SF for soft fine, can't read that one down here. And then here 716 for the manufacturing month and year of this nib slash pen, which is July 2016. We can unscrew the pen right here and we get the CON70 converter that the pen comes with. Um, I really like that converter. It's a pump action converter. Put the submerge the nib into ink, twist three a uh, pump three or four times here, and you'll get the full fill with a quite nice and large ink capacity, ink capacity, which is super nice. I believe the resin version of the pen comes with the CON50 converter. I don't like that converter. Quite small ink capacity. And if you do semi-flex the nib a little bit, the pen becomes a little bit more ink thirsty. So you really will want to have that CON70. But otherwise, if you just use the pen as a normal daily writer, and that is a fantastic daily writer. It's a very fine line, this fine here, a super smooth nib with a slight amount of bounce, a soft nib, it is a very soft nib. And uh, if you don't do a lot of this semi-flex writing, if you just use it for regular everyday writing, that CON70 really will last you for a very long time. So let's do a size comparison and let's do first a size comparison to my standard size reference pen, which is the Lamy Safari. And I think it is safe to say that when we have both pens capped, the pen is pretty much exactly the same length. Then a Lamy Safari, let's uncap the both pens. And I think it is safe to say that the Falcon is a tad shorter than the Lamy Safari. Something that I forgot to point out about the Falcon when we talked about the section is, and that is something that is slightly problematic for me personally, is that the Falcon has a pretty slim section. The section is even a tad slimmer or about the same size than the Lamy Safari section. I'm thinking if I have a M200 here, just a moment, please. Yes, I do. And the M200 also, or M400 in that case, also has a slim section. And um, yeah, I think it's it's about the same. However, the section of the M400 is does still feel a bit more substantial to me. So it's just something that I wanted to point out. If you are somebody that likes beefy, chunky pens, if you have a problem with with slim section that then might not exactly be the pen for you because the section is actually rather slim. I normally only do a size comparison to the Lamy Safari, but since many people are fans of pilot pens and maybe have a couple of pilot pens home, and I have a couple of other pilot pens here, I just thought as a service to you that it might be useful to see the Falcon beside a couple of other quite popular pilot pens. So we do have the Custom 74 here, and we have the vanishing point here, or the capless. I just uncap them quick, just for you to see that. Let's take that extra 30 seconds or so to do the size comparison to those pens as well. And that's what the picture looks like. I hope that's something that's useful for you and that I'm of doing maybe more often in the future that if I have a couple of pens of the same pen manufacturer around that I'm going to do some size comparison to within pen manufacturer pens um, of the same brand just just for you to get a little bit of a reference because yeah often it is the case that if people like Lamy pens or Pilot pens and they want to add another pen of that brand they probably already have pens of that brand anyway Towards the end of the review, now let's get to the writing sample. And uh, now I'll show you a little bit what that pen here can do. We start with some regular writing. And you see this nib is fantastic. I had the pen uncapped for quite a while now. We are 14 minutes into the review. The pen was uncapped for pretty long periods of review time and the nib has not dried up. So that is really fantastic characteristic. Pilot Falcon. This here is the soft fine nib. So this is now regular writing without pressure. It's a it's a wet nib. We are here on a Rhodia on a Rhodia pad with um, what is the ink? The ink is Hiroshi Suku Tsuyu Kusa. Excuse me. So as said, it's a it's a it's a wet nib. It's a wetter ink. So that's very nice. 
Now as to line variation, of course, that's what you what you all want to see is no pressure, a little more pressure. Let's zoom in probably so you can see that even a little bit better. I'm going to apply about as much pressure as I would feel comfortable applying to that nib without running the risk of damaging it. So if you want to push it a little bit, you can end up with something like this here. And that's what I meant before when I said, of course, if you have a fine nib, if you start out with a fine nib and then flex it, you'll end up with more line variation than if you start out with a medium or a broad nib. And then other some other cool things that you can do with this nib is that you can turn it around and then you can do, for example, do stuff like that. If you hold it at a quite high angle, you know, you can do something like that. You get a slightly broader line for underlining. If you hold it at a higher angle, even you'll end up with a quite extra fine line that is still smooth to write and legible to read. And then you can also, also when you lower the angle so that you're actually writing with that whole flat surface here, you can actually get a really nice, you just need to find the right angle at which to hold the pen. A bit difficult, I don't do that so often, but I've tried that a little bit before and it had worked. Yeah, like that, you see, if you find that angle, you can really smear ink and get a nice brush effect and you can use that for whatever art or calligraphy purposes. Um, for you maybe to see how fine the nib really is, I can compare the nib to some other nibs that I was just showing you. This is the soft fine of the Pilot Falcon as said. I have the Custom 74 here that also has a fine nib on. They are about the same width. And then I have a medium vanishing point here. So medium vanishing point, fine custom 74 and the soft fine Pilot Falcon. I hope that helped a little bit as a reference. That was that with the review of the Pilot Falcon. I hope the review was useful to you and I'm glad to see you at the next review. Bye bye.